We will now work our way through some of the examples in the list here, starting with the point-to-point -point examples. We have a variety of solutions here. Um, these are the 100 megabit solutions, the VFAST A, B, and the CWDM versions. They're dual fiber, um, and they run at 100 megabits per second. We have our gigabit solutions, the GFAST family, and it's available in a single fiber, a CWDM fiber pair, and a DWDM fiber pair when you outfit the units with SFPs. So we'll start with our VFAST 100 megabit example. And so what we will do is we will pick a VFAST A converter, which uh, we see now we have an incompatible wavelength that uses no SFP. And we see that if we had put an SFP in there, we would get a warning as well on that. So we'll just go back to no SFP. Sorry. And we will pick the appropriate wavelength for that device, and we can just pick off the VFAST A. Or if you happen to know that you wanted to do something at 1310, you could just pick off that as well, and both of those would come up as OK. So we'll do VFAST A, and you see it's a minus 7 dBm device. We have our patch panel. This is a point to point link with no intervening items. Uh, we've picked the, uh, we'll pick the typical fiber and um, so it, it uh, no need to enter a manual loss and let's just uh, do something a little shorter like 40 kilometers and allow 20 field splices that's one every two kilometers and um, two repair splices again we have no multiplexing equipment no additional losses required and we do need some equipment at this end and we will pick our VFAST A and no SFP and we find that in this case we have 8.4 dB of margin so that's pretty good and a nice easy link at 40 kilometers now what if we had to go 80 kilometers well, then we have a problem. So if, if in fact, we really did need to go 80 kilometers, and we'd say, well, the VFAST A doesn't look like it's going to do it for us, so let's pick a different product. Let's try the VFAST B. And it operates at 1550. It's also a minus 7 dBm device. But the fiber has less loss at that wavelength, so we might have a chance that this is going to work. And the receiver is also got a, it's, uh, should be matched up. No SFP, and in fact, we do, in fact, have lots of margin. So we see the first example here where if, if you have to go a reasonably long distance, even in a low capacity system, you will want to use a 1550 device. And you can see here in a typical fiber that the loss is quite a bit lower between the 1550 and the 1311. So that concludes our simple point to point 100 megabit link using uh, the VFAST A and B. Now, what we will do is we will look at a CWDM example. And so we will pick that. And we need to pick a CWDM wavelength for that. And let's just pick 1571. And we see that this output power on the CWDM devices is higher than it was for the VFAST A and B. Now we need to pick a um, device here that is the right device the VFAST CWDM. So now it's compatible and of course we have lots and lots of margin. That is because these devices were actually designed to work with multiplexers in between them and not just as point-to-point -point devices. And we will come back to that in a, in a later example. But first we're going to head off and look at our gigabit devices, the GFAST. So on the GFAST, we're going to look at the single fiber solution, uh, the CWDM and the DWDM options uh, using SFPs and also using PON optics. So we start by, well, I guess we'll call this something, GFAST examples. Okay, so let's start with 
the GFL single fiber, no SFP, and of course that comes up with a 1490 downlink and it happens to be a 1310 uplink. So again we're doing point to point so there are no multiplexers, amplifiers, although there could be amplifiers but there's no multiplexers or splitters in here. We'll stick with our 80 kilometer link and actually we're going to shorten that um, <clears throat> because the uplink optics uh, we happen to know are limited by dispersion to approximately 30 kilometer optics so we don't need quite so many field splices and we have no um, no amplifiers or splitters or anything at the receiver again and we want to match up our devices so we did this on the transmit so this is our receiver and you see that it has a minus 25 so we're transmitting at plus 3 from the head end a very high power device or a reasonably high power device and a receiver of minus 25 so we have a 28 db system gain and we have lots of margin because we're only going 30 kilometers so that, that makes good sense. Now we will look at the, uh, and we'll come back to this in a little later where we'll do some pawn architecture where we put some splitters in here and when you put the splitters in of course you're going to start to get loss in the system and then this margin will be eaten away. But for the moment we will go to the GFAST uh, with SFP optics and so we will pick an SFP and we'll pick a basic 28 dB one again and uh, we need to pick a wavelength and of course SFPs do include the 1491 so in fact the that wavelength works but we'll just go straight to the 1491 we have our patch panel we have no multiplexers because again we're doing a simple point to point link and we'll We'll change our fiber just for something to do. We'll go with our measured fiber over here. We'll stick with our 30 kilometers for the moment. And then we will go down and pick up a receiver. And the receiver needs to be the with SFP optics. And of course now we need to pick an SFP and we'll pick a 28 dB one. And we see we have lots and lots of margin. So just out of curiosity, how far would that go? And I think we know the answer is about 80 kilometers. Here we see we're down to about 2.3 dB of margin. You would probably look at that and go, well, it's a little bit weak. We'd rather use uh, 5 dB, in which case we would go with an SFP with a 31 dB system margin is our recommendation when you do a new install is try to have 5 dB a margin if you can and so there we have 5.3 so that would be a nice a nice link now what we're going to do is we will go and look at our list of oh we were going to do a DWDM so let's do, let's just do that here so what we will find this time is that the DWDM devices uh, well, they're, because they're still running at one gigabit and they have very high uh, system gains that they will go an exceedingly long ways. Now that's the good news. The bad news is that they work in 1531, 1551, and 1571. You'll see that CDWDM, so that's dense WDM and coarse WDM for those frequencies. So we will pick the 1531 and um, we'll just have a look at that long at that link and we see that again it still has 5.3 oh, actually it's going to have more because we're going to pick a 36 db dwdm sfp and we have sorry 4 db of margin so so that's a healthy enough link that we would probably be okay with that and if you needed longer, then you would pick a device with, with more margin here. Now what we'd like to do is go do a pawn example. So this will be a GFL with a single fiber with no SFP. And it, of course, operates at the GFL single fiber transmit rate. And then the receiver is the GFN, but single fiber version. And we don't need an SFP in that case. 
and we have an incompatibility in our wavelength and that would be GFL single fiber TX 1490 GLS because we did the wrong receiver here it should be the GFN single fiber there we go and we have about 2.3 dB of margin now of course as we mentioned earlier that doesn't actually work that way because the uplink optics um, are not designed for that distance because they're very wide lasers and have a lot of dispersion and those items have not yet been built into the spreadsheet but they will be over time so now just to refresh our memory where we're going here is that we're leaving this world of uh, point to point and going to the point to multi point and so what I've drawn here is a eight-way splitter here and a four-way splitter here and the GFL will support up to 32 GFN so the OLT supports 32 ONU so what you might might do when you first install a service because your your take-up rate is not that high yet is that the you know you might start with 8 or 16 customers per OLT but you don't need to just have them all hanging off of this guy so that if you had an area where you were expecting ultimately to have 32 customers but initially you only had four or five or six what we would recommend is that you start with a one to eight splitter here and then we use a one to four splitter here and this allows this OLT to be spread across all of this territory here and this this architecture will support 32 to 1 um, link budget loss it will also support 32 devices if you were installing a hundred megabit service though your normal ratio would be eight of these to one of those so if we if we set that as our target eight of these to one of those then a field splitter at eight is pretty good because each each one of these could go to its individual ONU or OLT but in the beginning we start with a four to one splitter in the head end and an eight to one splitter in the field so let's just have a look and see how that works on our link budget and how we implement that here <clears throat> so what we will do is that this is a uh, a GFAST uh, pawn with uh, CO splitters. So we start with our head end. We have no SFP, single fiber, and now what we're going to do is we're going to put in our 4 to 1 splitter, which we saw in the other drawing, and we see that it comes up with about 7.5 dB loss. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go over our 30 kilometers of fiber and the field splices and everything stay the same and now we hit the field splitter the field splitter and that was an eight-way splitter and <clears throat> we we find it in this case we actually have almost 2 db of loss and so when you look at these access systems using pawn they're, they're really designed when you're going to use a 32 to 1 split to run about 20 kilometers or so and you and you can see that here that we have um, not a whole heck of a lot of margin although typically you don't actually have a receive patch panel in a in a consumer system you'll just run the fiber to the house and if you have to monitor it you're you will be running it there so we can see here that a 32 to 1 20 kilometers is the max and we would probably run it more like 15 so let's just assume that this is an access network and, and which is what pawn is just, uh, designed for and and this was your initial implementation so we find that this this will work and you know like I said maybe maybe initially the the link is a little weak but as you add customers what we're going to do is we're going to remove that splitter there and then you'll find that the link gets a little stronger as time passes because you've got uh, fewer splitting of the power so here we've got our eight-way splitter here and so we look at how does this link perform at the end of time well that splitter comes out we increase of course the number of OLTs and we find that in this case now we have in the fullness of time we have way 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 more margin than we actually need now that we've completed that example what we'll do is we'll move on to the CWDM and then the CWDM with the DWDM
that will be in a new video segment.